Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiallahu anhu was a young man growing up in Yathrib as the light of guidance and truth began to spread over the Arabian Peninsula. He was a handsome and imposing character with black eyes and curly hair and immediately impressed whoever he met. He was already distinguished for the sharpness of his intelligence among young men of his own age. The young Mu'adh became a Muslim at the hands of Mus'ab ibn Umar anhu, the da'i whom the Prophet had sent to Yathrib before the Hijrah. Mu'adh was among the 72 Yathribites who journeyed to Mecca one year before the Hijrah and met the Prophet at his house and later again in the Valley of Mina outside Mecca. As soon as Mu'adh returned to Medina from Mecca, he and a few others of his age formed a group to remove and destroy idols from the houses of Mushrikeen in Yathra. One of the effects of this campaign was that a prominent man of the city, Amr ibn al-Jumuh, became a Muslim. When the noble Prophet وسلم, reached Medina, Mu'adh ibn Jabal stayed in his company as much as possible. He studied the Quran and the laws of Islam until he became one of the most well-versed of all the companions in the religion of Islam. Wherever Mu'adh went, people would refer to him for legal judgments on matters over which they differed. This is not strange since he was brought up in the school of the Prophet himself and learned as much as he could from him. He was the best pupil of the best teacher. His knowledge bore the stamp of authenticity. The best certificate that he could have received came from the Prophet himself when he said, the most knowledgeable of my ummah in matters of halal and haram is Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiallahu anhu. After the liberation of Mecca, the Quraysh became Muslims in mass. The Prophet immediately saw the need of the new Muslims for teachers to instruct them in the fundamentals of Islam and to make them truly understand the spirit and letter of its laws. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiallahu ta'ala to stay with him teach people the Quran and instruct them in the religion. Some time after the Prophet وسلم, had returned to Medina, messengers of the kings of Yemen came to him announcing that they and the people of Yemen had become Muslims. They requested that some teachers should be with them to teach Islam to the people. For this task, the Prophet وسلم, sent Mu'adh ibn Jabal anhu, to Yemen. The Prophet ﷺ personally bade farewell to this mission of guidance and light and walked for some distance alongside Mu'adh as he rode out of the city. Finally, he said to him, O oh Mu'adh, perhaps you shall not meet me again after this year. Perhaps when you return, you shall see only my mosque and my grave. Mu'adh wept. Those with him wept too. A feeling of sadness and desolation overtook him as he parted from his beloved Prophet, peace be upon him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and blessings of God be on him. The eyes of Mu'adh radiallahu ta'ala who never beheld the Prophet after that moment. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam passed before Mu'adh radiallahu ta'ala who returned from the Yemen. During the Caliphate of Umar radiallahu ta'ala who Mu'adh radiallahu ta'ala anhu was sent to Palestine to spread the religion. There Mu'adh radiallahu ta'ala anhu fell ill with an infectious disease. As he was near to death, he turned in the direction of Kaaba and repeated this refrain, Welcome death, welcome. A visitor has come after a long absence. And looking up to heaven, he said, O oh Allah, O oh Rabb, you know that I did not desire the world and to prolong my stay in it. O oh Rabb, accept my soul with goodness as you would accept a believing soul. He then passed away far from his family and his clan, a da'i in the service of God and a muhajir in his path.